Okay guys, it's finally time to change the hydraulic oil in my David Brown 1212. Now, there's not a lot of information out there on the interwebs about this particular tractor. This takes a different hydraulic filter than the 1210s, the 990s. All the other David Brown tractors take a different filter. This is almost a special filter unto itself. I don't know when you'll be seeing this video. Um, right now, it's April of 2022. These filters do not exist unless you live in the UK or Canada. Um, here in the United States, uh, this filter is pretty much unavailable. Nobody has it. I had, I, you could get it, you could order it from the UK, but you gotta pay import, you gotta pay duty fees, you gotta pay crazy shipping. Like a $60 filter could turn into like a $160 filter, which is just, if you can get it. Then you gotta wait like a month, a month and a half. It's just crap. I've had the case dealer scour the whole Northeast trying to find like an old filter that might still be in circulation somewhere. Um, anyway, it's a pain to get one of these filters. I got lucky. I stumbled upon a new old one on eBay. It was the only one available. Um, I've been checking consistently because I'd like to have a spare. They don't exist, guys. Um, so best of luck if you're in the States. If you can find a filter, awesome. Maybe share the source if it's if you can get more of them. But anyways, right now, I'll show you guys. I already drained the hydraulic oil about a month ago because I didn't realize how hard the filter would be to find. And underneath the tractor, this is what you'll see. This is where the filter hides underneath this. Right here, this is your drain plug. That has to be taken out for the fluid to drain. And then this right here, boop, that one, that is for the screen for the Selectomatic, or the, this one has a quad range, so that's for that part of the transmission. And then the whole thing has to come down, drop down, and underneath that is a gasket, which, by the way, the gasket also can't be gotten. So you gotta reuse your gasket, which is lovely. Um, and then you get it, the filter comes out of there. I'll show you what that looks like. Now, the only reason I'm changing the hydraulic fluid is because last winter, when it got very cold, none of the hydraulics worked. And the reason behind that was that there was so much water in the hydraulic oil, because it's probably been 20 years since it's been changed, that it froze. And it allowed no oil to be sucked up by the pump. All right, guys, I apologize for the bad lighting. There's not much I can do. The tractor's outside. You know, so what you're seeing is a reflection from the sky, and I really can't do much about that. Um, anyway, this cover is being held on by just two bolts, because that's all I left in there. Figured it would be a lot easier to take out two bolts than it would be to mess around. So I'll take those two bolts out, and this cover just comes right down. Okay, now I've already drained all the fluid out of here. If you do this without draining the fluid, you will be covered in 15 gallons of hydraulic oil. And believe me, it comes out fast. <laughs> it comes out very fast. So as you can see, that's the pickup for the screen. This is where the filter goes in. Bunch of junk in there, I'm gonna clean this all up. So there is all the sludge and nasty that was at the bottom of this filter. It's pretty much just water at this point. Um, I pulled out about a gallon, maybe a gallon and a half of water out of that thing. Pretty nasty. I'll get this cleaned up. Okay, here we are under the tractor looking up. Obviously, this is where the filter sets. You see the spring on the top. That is where the tube where the strainer goes in. And then this is the return, or this is actually where the, the suction comes from whenever this pulls from the bottom of the case. I'll show you that. So anyway, this housing is separate from this housing. So you don't have to pull this whole thing off. You just gotta pull the bottom off. So that's what that looks like. So right here, this is where the suction comes. The filter sets in here. So whenever you, I'm gonna reuse this gasket simply because I have no choice. I'm going to be using gasket sealer though, ultra black, which is oil resistant. Just be careful 
what you put around here and also wait a little while before you run it because there's a lot of suction through here and you don't want your hydraulic system to suck up any of that ultra black so let it kick before you put the fluid in and run it here's the bottom just to show you this is the drain plug that you'll drain to drain the fluid out of the thing so that's just got a little o-ring on there might might be nice to change the o-ring while you got this out and then this thing here this is the strainer strainer cover that holds in the strainer to the bottom of this okay so this strainer is supposed to be attached to this plug obviously those two aren't attached because what has to happen is this strainer has to be pushed up through whenever you're putting that back together so I'll try to mess with this maybe reattach it somehow to this or just make it work somehow this is probably the world's best part cleaner and it's right around five dollars and uh, twenty cents a gallon <laughs> soft road diesel fuel works really good anyway, I'm just getting this cleaned up so that I can potentially weld this back on okay I'm gonna do something here that I don't really want to do but I can't find this strainer anywhere and obviously it's ruined anyway so it's still better than no strainer so I'm just gonna tack weld this to the plug as you can see there's nothing that really holds it on uh, I'm just gonna tack weld it really lightly hoping that this will solve this problem okay so here goes nothing not sure if this is gonna work I mean, it's kind of working. It's a little hot, but I mean, that, that'll do just enough to hold that screen on there as you can see there's there's some damage here which I can't do anything about but that'll allow me to get this thing back together I'll grind those welds up just so it fits through the cover and that'll be good to go so so don't judge me by my welding skills guys on this one but there it is I just ground the welds down that'll be a good enough fix for this old girl whenever you're dealing with stuff that you just can't get sometimes you have to do stuff that's not exactly right but it will work so that threads into the bottom of the casting and as you can see that's what we're left with so that'll work just fine so here it is guys this is the filter that is almost impossible to find k929095 this is the filter that's supposed to fit in there this equipment part warehouse i found these guys on ebay but this is the new old stock filter that is impossible to find this filter is four inches tall, six inches wide, and it has a nipple on this end that sits down in here, just like that. And then the screen is from here. We haven't cleaned it yet, but that goes in like this. So that's the assembly that's inside that tractor. Now, there's other filters that if you punch in that part number that claims that they interfere or they interchange but they don't they're not truly four inches from here to there they're like two inches they're way shorter and it will not work in this tractor because there's nothing to hold that little clip that you saw on the top of the housing holds that whole assembly in once you put that up inside of there so the other filters aren't proper 
these are the ones that are so hard to find that you have to get them used, not used, but new old stock. There's no new ones really exist in this part of the country. Even though these two filters, you know, obviously one's brand new and one's old, but even though this filter is squashed, you can still see that that is indeed the correct height that this thing has to be. It's about as clean as I can get this thing. You can see there's some stuff floating around in there. But this thing is kind of a pain in the butt. This is a more or less a pressure relief. If the filter gets too plugged, this will open. And that is pretty darn hard to open. So I'm hoping that I never have to worry about this opening. Um, as long as I guess you keep a decent filter in there, this won't ever open. Not quite sure why they designed this filter to have this on the top. It's kind of a poor design. Why couldn't they have just put in a cartridge filter on, like on the outside of the machine or something? Instead of having to do all this nonsense. But, yeah, it is what it is. Okay, I don't know how much of this you're actually going to be able to see because I don't know if I'm going to get in the way or not, I guess, but I'm going to try to stay out of the way so you guys can see the process of putting this cover on. Okay. That's heavy too, it looks probably a little lighter in the video but that is a heavy piece of material to be holding up over your head now you can probably see me shaking a little bit oh, man. okay right there okay Now, one of these bolts is a lot longer. There's a bunch of junk on there. I don't know which one it is. I think it's that one right there. Okay, so here's that piece I was taught, this strainer that I was talking about. I don't know if you can see that very well. So here's the strainer I was talking about and the one that I fixed. Well, kind of fixed, even though there's a big hole in the side. This is kind of a pain in the butt. I did put grease on that O-ring so it does slide a little better too. So basically, you gotta align that, which is difficult to do. So, they should have tapered the surface so this would have just slid right in but instead you kind of have to feel around for that port and that transmission that this fits in which they don't make it easy of course right there okay so that's in and the trick is you just basically have to push and turn at the same time. There it is. 
So there it is. That'll work fine for what it is. Finally, the drain plug. Actually, metric. Actually, no, what do I got on here? 15 sixteenths? Fits just about right. Probably is metric, but. That 15 sixteenths fits on there really tight, so. This was already showing signs of being rounded over by somebody. So I'm sure whatever metrics equivalent of this is long since gone. And this is a one and three quarter inch socket for this filter strainer. Just so you guys know. And also all these bolts are half inch. I am gonna let this silicone, this ultra black silicone set up a little bit before I torque all these just to kind of give it the benefit of the doubt to make like a nice gasket and then I'll torque these bolts all down. All right so I just torqued the bolts on the bottom of that sump and now it's time to start putting fluid back in this thing. Obviously this is where you check the fluid. This is where you fill the fluid. Now that looks like it's had a rough service life over the years. Oh, and that's loose. Interesting. So I'll go find a funnel for that. Oh, you can kind of see in there a little bit. What's in there? Uh, interesting. So, looks like. <laughs> looks like there's been a lot of water in this thing for a long time so hopefully this hydraulic change this hydraulic filter change will do good I'm sure there's still some junk in there because there's still fluid in all the rams you know but this will displace most of that fluid this is the fluid that I'm using this is just a universal tractor transmission fluid basically transmission and hydraulics um, why am I using this because it's about $20 cheaper per five gallon pail than anything else I could find. And I know that there is still old fluid in this thing. So I'm probably gonna do this again as long as I can find another filter. So that's what we're using. Good stuff, I've used this in the past. So that's 10 gallons in, and it's reading on the dipstick. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's already up to it's already up to the high line. So I'm going to start the tractor, run it, and see how much that goes down. This thing hasn't been started in quite a while. So I don't know what I'm gonna run into. I'm gonna have to charge the battery. I don't know, we'll see. This has been a decent tractor. You have lights. Come on. All right, give me a good chance to try out this battery charger again. Uh, I just cycled this for about 15 minutes on a 40 amp charge, or excuse me, 30 amp charge. So. Let's go try it again. I let this thing run for a minute or two. I didn't want to run the hydraulic system dry if it was low. And uh, it does need just a little bit more, so we'll give it another little bit. All right, we've got a nice little job here for the David Brown. I got five loads of gravel that have been dropped off a couple weeks ago. But I've been 
cleaning up a lot of the brush and the trees and the whole area I cleaned out we're gonna push that all back and we're gonna have some nice nice parking back here We've got a little something I'm burying back here those are all those prickly vines which are miserable I tried moving them over to the big brush pile didn't really work out so I'm just gonna put some dirt over them and they'll be there for a while so anyway let's get moving this dirt Well, we kind of got rained out, guys. I got the David Brown put back there. Um, I tried smoothing, I tried smoothing around that gravel, and it's just getting way too wet. Um, in here, the tractor probably saw me a couple times get stuck. Uh, it's pretty soupy because there's a lot of water underneath here. You can kind of see some of it there still. So it's kind of displacing a lot of that water, but I gotta wait for this to dry up a little bit. So for right now, guys, tractor runs awesome. I'm happy with what I did. Um, filter's kind of a pain and the whole procedure to do that was kind of a pain. I don't know, whoever engineered that tractor, they would have been much better off. Just uh, put an external filter on the thing instead of having to take the whole sump and drain all the fluid, change the hydraulic filter. So anyway, there you go, guys. See you in the next one.